following is part two of the technique analysis segment on the STD podcast. In this podcast, we go over the second half of the technique analysis videos that we did not finish in the first video. This will likely be a returning segment on the podcast as I've gotten a lot of feedback that people found utility in this segment. And there's also a few things we'd like to improve on for future episodes that we discuss in the podcast. I want to thank you all for watching this segment. If you do enjoy the podcast, please like, comment, and subscribe, and consider leaving a review on your favorite listening platform. Thank you all for watching. All right. Back to the technique analysis. We're going to finish the second half of our submitted technique videos for you all. Before we start, how many of you guys got a me message from anybody and be like, hey, why didn't you do mine? I didn't actually get any. I got, I got two. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, don't yeah. worry, we'll get to it. I tried and to I explain that. He's an asshole and went to London is why we haven't done it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to explain that in the, the intro thing. Like, hey, guys, it's only half of them. It takes a while to do these. All right. I know where we're starting. What the hell is this? Get out of here. So can... we have, what, uh, 11? Um, yeah. All yeah, right. Like that. Cool. That'll be perfect for... Uh, we already did the lateral race. I already did this one. I don't know. Rise. I think he submitted it twice. Okay. You can, you're an idiot. Keep scrolling up, Dylan. Did did we get all those rows? I believe so. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, the last yeah, one was the squatting, the Logan squatting yeah. one. Yes. So we Sorry. have the incline yeah. bench now. Yeah. Yep. So we got Melvin. All right, let's let's rip it. Still open. <laughs> I love when I start recording and Google Drive stuff when to open videos. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it takes forever. Okay. It's a failure. I don't really have anything. I do have a couple things. Um, I okay. I, again, so keep like, Shimmy. Do you not have anything because you don't want to be like an over anal okay. asshole? Or right. okay, yeah. So meaning I mind. could like I could say his his pause speed was not uh consistent in the That's beginning. Part of what I was gonna then say. it got consistent at the end. I could say that. I could say his eccentrics were not consistent throughout. They were fine, but they weren't consistent. But I would still accept this. Okay, so th so th this is the thing. This is a good like this is a good technique, and I would accept it. But again, it goes back to that. If someone is sending a video in for us to like critique, I have to assume they want like the nitty gritty. Okay. Right. And. and are like so yeah you know, we'll preface it preface it if it's good by saying hey man this is good and if you stick with this you are like 95 percent of the way there but here are some things you could do that might make it just a little bit better so uh yeah inconsistent pauses and on one a, on a couple of them you actually kind of did a bounce at the bottom and you see that a lot with squats you actually see it less with presses but you come down here, you touch, and then you kind of do this before you start pressing. Here, from a full pause, press. Don't get the little bounce going where you kind of like use the your body to throw it off your chest. Mm -hmm. Um, that's that's probably the biggest thing I see that I would cue on. And the last thing is um specifically in the bottom, the last like third of the rep really start to slow that eccentric down so you can control the speed that you touch your chest with yeah so you're not letting it kind of crash down towards the bottom that would be one thing i would say because i've had a few injuries from that specifically in that mm -hmm. lowering range so i i mean maybe i'm a little more biased for that reason but i always try to get clients to slow down the once you're getting entering those those like really deep stretches and stuff like that yeah, i've got one of those i've yeah. got okay. 
Play it again. Okay. So you don't see it in rep two. I think you start to see it. Uh, yeah, rep three. Yeah, rep four. Okay. Yep. So Melvin, there's a difference between training to train and training to survive. You look like you are training to survive this set. Uh -huh. Notice your lower body has a lot of movement going on from rep three onward. Now, mind you, Melvin, I'm nitpicking. You're largely fine. But being that I am nitpicking, these movements are meant to train your chest, not move the weight at all costs. There is a difference. Now, what you're doing, you're going to press the weight, but you're likely going to yield more residual fatigue from set to set in what you're doing. So I would actually say, this is so on brand. Slow down your eccentric. It full pause. Say. Yeah, full pause. <laughs> and when you notice that your body position is no longer the same place that it was in rep one, rep two, rep three, your set is over. Do yeah. not press to survive press to train your chest um so this is actually a little thing that um i i have to wonder if maybe he ever focused on like pure strength or powerlifting before where he starts doing a bunch of leg drive to try to get it going um so if you're pressing for hypertrophy you're not focusing on using the leg drive you're focusing on using your legs to push yourself into the bench for stability but you're not focusing on kind of coiling and springing which is what you do with leg drive in, in a powerlifting bench you kind of let yourself coil you let your legs coil up and then you spring by using that leg drive to press and getting that pop off your chest and especially in those last like two reps i would have said your your pecs were at zero rar like two reps ago read yeah. Because in those last two reps, your whole body is really starting to move to get it started. And then you're just trying to maintain that momentum to finish. He's you also wearing your, a weightlifting belt. So that definitely is a dead giveaway. Yeah. You know, you see like your hips are kind of sliding up the bench just a little bit. So, you know, you have to keep in mind what your goal is. If you're doing this press for getting bigger pecs, then... I would limit that leg drive, you know, and when you start to like move your legs, push your legs out, things like that, I, in my opinion, I'm like, mm, the set, if you, if you have to go from not using leg drive to do using leg drive to finish a rep, the set's over. Yeah. Agreed. For sure. So practically if he were to implement some of these changes, he'd probably have to reduce the load a little bit. Right. Yep. 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 It sucks, but that's how it is sometimes. Yeah. No, I mean, look, like when we went to the we did the full raw meetup, um, I came back home and like reevaluated everything and I was like, no, there's there's some opportunities here where I can reduce the weight on a lot of things. Just like your leg press. You did a whole video about it. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. You reduce your leg press. Guys, yeah. if you're watching this, go check out Dylan McCartney's Instagram and look at his uh leg press reel. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i did it with a lot of things too and i just think it's... i actually think it's it's good to like take an a, if you can't yourself find someone you trust to take an honest look at your training every few months yeah and see what can what can you audit yeah look at shh. yes Maddie. sorry <laughs> <laughs> who's this? this this guy looks like an idiot who is this <laughs> It's Zach, my trading partner. <laughs> <laughs> he just wow. wanted to be an asshole. So I, don't think he, I don't think he even wants a, an analysis so here. Good. Uh, the uh, the uh, Zach, the thrusting. So good. The thrusting could use a little bit better uh, uh, force. Can you can you slow it down? I don't think I can. Oh, well, maybe I can. Yeah, you oh can. my go god, there. Zach, you're yes. an asshole. Yes, go point five speed. Okay. Yes. All right, so we're gonna critique critique your uh, your form here. Uh, this is the uh, yes. <laughs> a little bit more follow through with the thrust. I was gonna say you you really shallow there, Zach. Yeah. Um, 
And you know, I know your wife, so I can talk to her if you need me to. Like honestly, man, your thrust is lacking range of motion. I'm not here for that, sir. You should be. I'll, I'll help you write your program for that. Really get your hips where they need to be. He had to. He had to stay quiet about this for like two weeks. <laughs> no, I already knew about it. Oh, really? Well, he told me he did, and I was like, you know, I I expect as much from you, so you're an asshole. That's great. All right, this Ross, Ross. Shout out, Ross. Ross, thank you for sending. Deadlift. Yes. All right, I love so you. Ross, I, I, I hate I hate your retail locations. By the way, much prefer TJ Maxx. Marshall. Yes, I'm a Marshall. Yeah, Marshalls, I'm a Marshalls guy. Marshalls, hundred yeah. percent. So, um, I actually talk to Ross fairly frequently on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, He's he in the fact that he has fucking chains on the bar. I, mean, uh, those, I literally didn't even notice that. I don't think those are he, are those two like. Uh, it looks like it's actually uh, leader chains that he would be doing chains. I know. It, so I I tell tell Ross this a lot. You need to like. He never is sure if he wants to be training like a power lifter or training for hypertrophy. And so he tries to get the best out of both worlds and generally just kind of, and I've told him this, he gets the worst out of both worlds instead. Yeah. Um, He's, he's a home gym guy and he's probably got the world's longest femurs according dude, to his videos. Dude, his technique is good. His technique is great. Technique's good. Ross, I have nothing, bro. So far. Right. Nope. I have yeah. nothing, Ross. I have nothing. Right. Yeah. For great. for a conventional deadlift, that looks incredible. Yep. It's great, man. Moving and on. And especially with your levers. I mean, these femurs are obnoxiously long. It looks like his torso is like oddly short. Yep. So yeah, just uh that looks perfect. Yep. Ross, you got a cosign from the three amigos. You're good. All right. He decided to change and put on some shoes for his stiff-legged deadlift. Okay. I have a few things here, but I will let it play. Mm-hmm. Trevor, you go first unless you want me to. Uh, I'll, I mean, I'll go. I've told him all these things before, though, so I was going to let you go first. You, okay, you want me to go first. Um, okay, so a few things. Um, it looks like you can probably sink this a little deeper. You'd obviously have to use a smaller plate, but it looks like you can sink this a little deeper. Um, I would tell you maybe slow down your eccentric a little bit, but only if you don't feel this a lot, because if you already feel this a lot, your upper back is in a really good place. And so is your lower back and your there's yeah. no rounding. So, um, only if you were to be like, I feel this in my hamstrings, but like kind of not a lot. Then I would say slow down your eccentric. But if you do feel it, it, it the, the eccentric speed would be fine. And I would say go a little bit lower. That's really all I would say. Pausing, meh. Like if you if you want, but I don't think it's necessary if you feel this a lot. My big thing is I would tell him to go slower past his knees. Yeah. As yeah. slow slow the second half of that eccentric down. Like the first rep is pretty good, but as he goes, he kind of gets quicker and quicker through the second half. You think so? Just a slight bit. I don't see that. It looks this it all looks the same to me. His first rep was slower past the knees. And then it gets further and further down where he slows down. This all looks yeah. fine. I would just say, Ross, I think you can you can go lower. In your uh, range of- and I, I have seen videos of him. So so one thing he was asking about was this like upper back position and i always forget this is not my screen sharing so me using my mouse doesn't do any good anyway his upper back position um i would actually say that he his upper back position could change a little bit so i'm curious what you guys think about this when i'm doing a stiff legged deadlift i don't pull the bar to my shins Okay. I keep my lats tight and it, that puts the bar roughly over like my midfoot, but it doesn't pull tight into my shins. When I pull tight into my shins, it's like I'm trying to do like a pullover and pull the bar in and my lats and upper back fatigue well before I get anywhere versus just locking my back in tight. I do the same thing as you. Yeah, so I you think- just lock your back in tight. 
Right. So I think he has a tendency to try to pull too much into him. I think that if he were to relax that a little bit, he would actually feel a lot more tension in his hamstrings and feel less like his back is limited as he adds weight. Dylan, I have an idea. Tell me what you think. I'm only saying Dylan Trevor because it's Dylan's podcast. That's it. Also, for Dylan, future, where's your video? For, for future it, videos, I don't inter- interrupt for future videos, Dylan, what do you think about asking people to sort of give a little voiceover or intro or write up of their feelings on the movement before we critique them? Like if someone comes and is like, hey, I think the movement feels good. I feel it a lot, but I just, I trust you guys. Or, hey, this movement used to feel good. Now it doesn't. Or, hey, this movement doesn't feel good at all. And I want it to feel good. Or just some sort of preface to give us a little bit of context. What do you think? If not, not, but. I think that's a horrible idea. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. that's great. I, I actually kidding. think it's a good idea because it yeah, does help idea. having a little bit of context as to yeah. Yeah. the who, what, when, why of the movement. Because otherwise, you know, essentially we're just waxing, right? We're just spewing. Right. Without any context. We're just giving you our best SFR tips. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Which I still think people can find value, but yeah, well, we're fine. We can refine over time as we do these. And I think, yeah, I mean, look, hey, we're learning. This is the second time we're doing this. We're learning. Yeah. I think if like people were to tell us, like, Hey, I want to feel this in my hamstring. Oh, God. Yeah. I remember. I got sent this. Oh, I submitted this. You get sent this? Okay. Oh, it's great. I have no critiques. I have no idea what the fuck is happening, but maybe a little more eccentric control. I don't even know if there is an eccentric. I I think he's legitimately throwing it. Yeah. (laughs) I think he's letting it bounce and throwing it down. I I just can I get a machine like this? Can we like cool machine? I I want I want a machine like this where you can like put your own bar in there. Because then I could oh, be, be a, so cool. a cambered bar Smith machine. Yeah. No, have you seen? They have Smith machines with camber bars. Those are so I know. Sick. Somebody sent when? me a video of one. What I've end? seen them before. I, I, some dude sent me a video. He's like, hey, my gym has one of these. And I was like, cambered bar Smith I machine, dude. So badly. Holy shit. Did we buy one, guys? I, I, yeah. <laughs> I totally, like, yeah, yeah. In between all of us. Do we, do we just like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we freight it. We take yeah. turns and freight it around. We'll load, up, we'll load up a truck and. Dude, no, no, no. What we do is we look at the map, right? So there's Arizona, Florida, and Oklahoma. And we put the Smith machine in a gym in a state in the middle of us that none of us are in. <laughs> and like, <laughs> distant. We could not be we like, just like we're literally in complete, like we're literally divided amongst the United States. Like we're, yeah. Yeah. I'm on the far West. You're on the far East. Trevor's right in the middle. Yeah. So clearly that means we put it in Oklahoma because that's what makes sense. Right. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, is this Steven? Steven. Steven. Stefan. Looks, like looks like a lot of weight. Yes. He's a strong boy. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Steven, you fucker. You knew what you were doing when you sent us this. You know this is he great. He did. He did. God Him damn and Hunter you, train it together all the time. They know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Damn you, bro. This looks fantastic. Yeah, and even being nitpicky, there's not like anything I can say. Want me to be nitpicky? Take well, off a... your belt. Take off your belt and your knee wraps, and then let's see what's up, bitch. There's, there's <laughs> sleeves, not wraps. What? A, uh, okay. There's Whatever. A difference. Whatever. If they were wraps, it'd be like 50 pounds he's adding. Sleeves, Dude. depending on the tightness, he might get 10. Which Dude, I would say. Pounds. Steven, yeah. you crushed that. Man. that yeah, that's awesome. amazing. <laughs> I don't I don't know what hack that is, but it looks like a nice hack. Yeah. I was about to say, I don't know what hack squat that is either. Oh, shimmy. Uh, on the hack squat, uh, Scott, the video guy, messaged me. He got to try the Atlantis hack squat that I keep telling you is the best thing ever. Yeah. What? See, in, in Vegas you want right a max no, no, no. The the V2, the one I've been using. He probably, yeah. And he loved it? Video. The, the one that uh, Max uses is the original, which is not nearly as good. Yeah, I don't like that. But the, the new one that I've been using is amazing. Mm-hmm. And I've been telling Scott, and he tried it, and he messaged me. He was like, okay, you were right. That's the best hack squad. I'm, I'm just waiting for you guys to jump on the old Cybex with yoga blocks. I've so- used it. No, but you never used it with yoga blocks. I'm not, I'm taller than you. I don't need yoga blocks. 
I think oh, I have. have really good information. I think at my parents, uh, near my parents, I have a gym with this old Cybex, the one that's like really heavy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's. Yeah, I haven't tried to yoga box yet. So that one with yoga box, Dylan, is my favorite hack squat on earth. On earth. Yeah. I'm gonna try I, to use I the really, V2. I want you to use the V2 Atlantis. I, I want to hopefully use the V2 hopefully I go to Atlantis elevation too. when I'm in Vegas next week. Yeah, tell have tell it? them tell them that you don't want to train legs at uh Dragon's Lair that you want to go. I think to we're that. training chest, so I don't know. Oh, are you filming with them? Yeah. Yeah. You are filming? Are you doing one video, Dylan, or a few? I, I think one, maybe you split A and PM. I'm not sure yet. What do you why are you guys training? You're doing push? It sounds like push, yeah. Do you know what movements you want to do? No, I'm just gonna see what, what the deal is when I get there. Um I think I, I, I normally do say... a cambered. I normally do a cambered bar bench on that day, but so uh, I think oh this is cool. Wait a minute, this is live. Oh, so people are gonna hear this conversation. Okay, this is oh cool. yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, I think. You should do a cambered bar bench to show people that despite the fact that you can be very large, you still can achieve these ranges of motion. Interestingly, oh, yeah. shimmy shimmy is part of the reason that I did we did camber bar incline in the video with Izzy and I. Bro, I'm just a fucking ninja in the because, background. Uh, shimmy had said it, and I had wanted to. So when Mike asked, I was like, I want to do incline camber bar incline. Yeah, because it's one of my favorite exercises. I wonder if any of the gyms in Vegas have cambered bar. I'm sure they do. Uh, on, Dragon's Lair does. Dragon's, Dragon's Lair does. And Dylan, cool. here's the reason why you're going to look like a badass. Because you <laughs> use the cambered bar that's huge, which is yeah. the one that I have. That so when you go crazy to the normal ever. cambered bars, you're going to fucking rip shit. Yeah, it'd be cool if I could touch. We'll see. You'll be able to. Yeah, I think after a few more reps, I'll be able to. 100%. Yeah, you need a little weight on there, but... And I feel like with the not as deep camera, I'll be able to load it just a little bit more too. Can I make, can I go off in a small little rant real quick based on sure. something that uh, Dylan just said? He, he said, after a few warm ups, I think I'll be able to touch. Um, the, so I just have to go and rant on the active range of motion thing. Um, I don't know how much attention either of you have paid to that, but the way that they, test active range of motion is at the start of a session if you're going to test your chest's active range of motion at the start of a session before you do any warm ups or touch a weight you see how far you can come back and that's your active range of motion so, so if, I, if i'm use at all times yeah. so if i'm warmed because up because that's considered passive like is that, is that what you're that's, saying that's what they say yeah if if you oh. have to if if it requires you to need weight or work to be able to get in those ranges of motions, it's not your active range of motion. Hmm. I just had to rant for a moment on how stupid that was and how clearly like the understanding of physiology is not there to understand how that is yeah. the case. Yeah. I mean, like that's my deepest stretch. I feel so much tension after I've gotten a few more upsets and I just don't, feel like if i literally went straight into that i'd like tear it back like if i was just like all right load yeah. up the bar and just go well, straight and, into my and, expression. It, and it's just a thing that's like it's a, it's a neurological thing right right and that's what's like as you your neurology is actually changing through a warm-up and allow your that's allowing your body to get in those deeper ranges mm -hmm. so if we say the range that i can do completely cold without doing anything without any warm-up without gravity assisting me through other things is the only range of motion i should ever train in you are leaving so much on the table have you have you read the uh, meta-analysis by milo yet i have not i have not i want I to but it's i have it i have it in my queue i need to get around to it I, i'm curious if passive range of motion is like if, what if they're it's, achieving if it's, yeah yeah and as well, far as and, length and muscle length yeah, I. That's another thing. I, I, I don't. I don't. I would like to read that before I give my thoughts on that. Yeah, that, I agree. Uh, topic. Because <laughs> I've heard some debate um, about I, like, I, oh, yeah, you can't be passive range of motion; it has to be active range. Um, my 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 thinking toward that is like, if you're achieving a long muscle length with lots of tension in the muscle, 
then it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I think that I think that that misses uh, some of the internal tension created in the mus muscle. Um, right. And it's not like, OK, so if if I get there passively, if I relax and let that stretch happen. I. How do I get out of that stretch? Right. By creating active tension and contracting the muscle. Yeah. Just because I allow it to go passive stretch for a moment doesn't mean that it's completely inactive. Right. Right. And I feel like yeah. that's just kind of like a I, I feel like that's a thing where people say that and they like don't understand how actual like physiology works. Right. And how like the neuromuscular system works. So yeah. I feel it. I feel All it. right. Shimmy's just letting us nerd out and rant for a moment. I am. All right. Looks like we got. We have a deficit boy. on deficit cambered bar row. Okay. Flexion row. Oh, okay. Who is this? This is Tam. You know him? The He's man. one of my friends. He's local to me. Okay. He's one of my clients. So Yeah, we stayed with him in Vegas for the. Uh... Yeah. Tan, there's too much happening. This is too much <laughs> motion for you. In my so opinion. I oh, I agree. And this is from like two or three weeks ago. We've already adjusted technique from this video. Yeah. Because Tan, what, what's what did, happening is even though I, I can tell you exactly what we did. Yeah, I mean, even though you're rowing, you're you're getting a lot more from uh from like the waist and the lower back, and yeah. it's deceiving. So it doesn't look so much like you're rowing from your upper back. It looks like you're just moving yourself up and down with your lower back. Well, um, remember, these are flexion rows. Part of the, the goal know, is to know, train but, the erectors. But, but to, to, to be silly for a second, how flexion is flexion? And the yes, answer no, is... no, I agree. And, you know, like, you right, and I right. always usually eye to eye. It's a little bit, right? Yeah. If, if, if a... Boy. Let's, let's, let's try this on for size. If a regular row is here, a flexion row is just here. It's yep. not, I'm here, so then I'm here. You know what yeah. I mean? If I'm chilling, now I'm here. Like, yeah. it's very subtle difference. Uh, so, so a flexion row. And for row... any of you guys listening to this and not watching it, I literally just got naked and uh, did things. Put the cucumber down, Jimmy. The cucumber. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> I yeah, I just completely forgot what we we're talking about. For a minute. <laughs> I have I, I the, after I say that, that's usually what happens. So don't worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, so I I'll walk you through what I uh, what I told him for this. So when you're doing a flexion row, the majority of the movement you want to come from your thoracic spine. Yes. Yes. A little yeah. bit from your lumbar spine is is okay and somewhat desirable, but you don't want all this massive movement coming from just the lumbar spine. Uh, so decrease the deficit some and focus on rounding from the point of the bottom of your sternum here. And then as you extend, you lift this point up. So you also extend and arch harder than he's doing so he is using all his lower back which I, now uh now i'm gonna pull a shimmy over here yeah guys trevor's about to take his pants off if you're listening better get the video quick so it, it's do you ever find it's almost awkward to do things wrong because you're still not used to it um yeah. i mean i don't know i think i could i could show it wrong <laughs> He's literally doing this where it's like all his lumbar back. Dylan, if you don't click this, I'll kill you. Needs to be here. This is so good. <laughs> here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And if you look at your low back there. The low back is maintaining relatively stable. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Ken, I think I would just get rid of this box that you're standing on entirely because even though you have a flexion row, I know because I think I've done this before when I was not as intelligent. You immediately think, oh, I need to get more range of motion. You already have 25s on the bar. You can achieve a flexion row just like a, a regular deficit row with no extra. You don't need to stand on that box. Okay, some people do shimmy. I do. Yeah, but that didn't, you don't need to, you need to stand on that box now. When you <laughs> yeah. the flexion rows, you didn't need to stand on that well, box. That came with time. For example, the last video you guys saw of me, I'm used to doing 25s and I can do that comfortably. So I figured with a barbell, I could do a deficit. So I was looking with dumbbells, I probably need a deficit. So I added a deficit with dumbbells and I ended up doing to a lesser degree what, what, what Tan is doing here, right? Yeah. In that last video. Yeah, you're letting your lumbar take over the movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ideally, it's a little lumbar, a lot of thoracic uh, extension and flexion. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my dog oh, keeps God, I actually my... got a pump in my mid back after just doing that. <laughs> Trevor, we're one, Dylan's 100% making a clip of you. It's going to be very funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I expect put, nothing else. What should we put below Trevor is the question. Um, Do you know the audio that goes? Have you ever seen the Jungle Book? Like the real life action? No, I haven't. Hey. Okay. So they're dan they're, they're like doing a ball dance and the oh. audio is like da 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 Do you know it? I mean I know that's I don't song, remember yeah. that. You don't remember it? I, you'll have to send a clip of that because I don't remember that. The oh, the live oh, action oh. one. So I was on the phone with one of my friends last night and I gave him like a random anchorman quote. And he's like, yo, that was a deep cut. I was like, dude, I only live in the deep cuts of <laughs> movies. I just have the to say, it's actually amazing that Shimmy can retain so much information because clearly his brain is full with uh, various movie quotes and scenes. He's, he's and better. Than this. Yeah. I, I think I, I he must have like a photographic memory where he just doesn't forget anything he's seen. So I have to so like it. My brother and I, this is where like this is why I like clipping movies because my brother and I like every Thursday we get together to watch a movie. My brother has a like legit photographic memory of like he can tell you what actors are in the movie. He can tell you certain things like where it was shot, like all this crazy shit. And he like literally is uh, a nerd when that when it comes to that stuff. So that's where my I think that's where Shimmy and I have a, like a, an overlap where we like a lot of the same movies and we know a lot of the same references. Um, and I suck at that. <laughs> it's I also wish like, there's like five but, but there's, movies. Like, you know Waterboy, bro. You know Waterboy. I, yeah. I know Waterboy. It's like movies that I've seen a ton of times. Waterboy, yeah, yeah. School of Rock. Um, School of Rock is a classic. School of Rock is a classic. So good. We need to we need to clip that one. We need to use yeah, that. We I need to think. We yeah, do. think about the how fact that you have Buddy Oda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that guy. That little ugly, and I hate you. Yes, yes. All right, let's see these uh, these push -ups. deficit pushups. So so he's using yoga blocks. Okay, I like. All right. I thought I would use something more firm, but I guess if he can achieve it, then fine. He's not like his hands are not. Sometimes squishing. this is what you have around to, you know? Yeah. I love this, man. Trevor, did you critique this already? I haven't actually critiqued this yet. I haven't seen this video. I think this must have been so, this so I So I've given this cue to a lot of people, and I've actually been giving this, this cue for a very long time. This one yeah. right here? But, the hips. Yeah, that, that. When you have, so for people listening, when you have your, when you're doing regular push-ups, whether it's regular or deficit, have your butt kind of up in the yeah. air. So you're biasing the load to your actual chest. So you're not completely parallel to the floor, but you're lifting your butt up, almost pushing more of your weight to your upper body. Um, yeah. I've been giving this to you for literally years. Um, yeah. It's awesome. It's a game changer. Wow. If you want to like actually do pushups for like chest, I yeah. mean, you, cause you, you can do like a pushup where you just have like a straight line torso. And you'll do it, and you're like, eh, I don't, I don't feel much of anything. But you do this, and you'll feel so much in your chest. That tan, this is great, G. Yeah, Impressive. you do the same. The only, you do the same. The, okay. The only only thing I would say is slight. If you're wanting to work, uh, which actually, 
this might be uh, on his tricep day, so it might be for his tricep anyway. If you're wanting to work your chest, I would have your arms maybe a little wider um, and less elbow tuck. And yeah. uh, because this is literally only because I know him and I know the gym he's at, uh, get the handles and not the yoga blocks because they look like they're about to flip over any second on these reps. That's why I said And it's freaking, it's freaking me out. <laughs> Yeah, Tan. Uh, I like keep waiting for it to flip up and him to face plant. Tan, maybe consider two of uh, uh big bumper plates. I know that's more annoying to bring over, but use those. Yeah, it's it's just freaking me out. <laughs> yeah, Dylan, are you gonna ask? Guess, I was gonna ask literally the direction Trevor was going. Like, what would you do for triceps? If if I was doing it, like, wait, what? Would you would you would you aside from elbow tuck? Would you make any modifications? to this to make it more tricep. Um, so if I'm doing a, a, a push up for tricep bias, I actually make it almost like a, a JM press slightly. Yeah. Yeah. So where rather than being like here with it, I bring my I have my hands here. So as I come down, I actually create an elbow angle that mm -hmm. I push up with. Okay. Could I technically yeah. like move oh, god damn it i keep bumping my thing sorry now that's not now i can't show what i was going to show here <laughs> uh, nothing but a top tier production quality here it's the i need a new capture card i've, I've spent so much money on camera shit i don't even want to i don't want to buy any more shit anytime soon. <laughs> um okay now i'm lagging um like as much as i can fit here could i uh, technically like move down like this yeah i mean you could you could make that at various levels of extreme. like have my yeah yeah i was thinking <laughs> you about could that. do a full-on like so right like an inverted skull crusher on like a smith machine or something yeah yeah you can literally go all the way to doing that on the ground yeah okay i like where that. you're I, doing I, I, that. I think that's actually called a planche push-up Dylan, where uh, like you actually come down like this and then push up. Dylan, before it's an incredibly say, advanced tricep exercise. Though. That's I was before you say I might try that, Dylan. It's very hard. It, very please, hard. If you do and try it, you if you do weak, try bro. it, please video it. Yeah, and I we will. will put it in the podcast if you fall on your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also I'm doing it as a superset currently, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, you would totally fall on your face. I'm doing about eleven do reps it. of the close grip, so. Dylan, I don't think um, you can do it, and it's not a slide. I just I don't think you're not good. You're not yeah, in a yeah, superset, right. like a full challenge. on a full on planche push up where you're doing like a full on like this. It's all tricep. We'll have to see. I'll I would be do some, amazed if you I'll probably do, do like a uh uh, in the middle Mc kind of. You yeah, know what I mean? Or maybe like, like here. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll probably end up doing something like that. Crazy. Did you ever see the superset that I had with the assisted dip machine uh, at my gym? No, I have no idea. So our our assisted dip machine has these foot like the foot place. You know, you just step onto it, and I was doing some like tricep work on it with my button there, and that was like one of the best supersets. I would do assisted dips and then go into a superset with that, and it was so awesome. It was like one of my favorite. Uh, I remember seeing that. Sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good superset. I yeah, love I really like that. I was putting in a lot of clients' programs too, who trained at the same gym. I was like, "Guys, try this." Dylan, have you seen Hangover Three? I don't think so. We did this video. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. Trevor, have you seen Hangover Three? Nope. So they want to send Alan to a um, like a rehab facility, and they're like, "Alan, we want to send you to New Her this place called New Horizons. It's pretty awesome." And he goes, "Yeah, that does sound awesome." All right. Anyway, I'm just here, everyone. It's fine. I will just be myself, be by <laughs> myself. Oh, okay. This is Meredith. I used to be in person, by the way. Okay. God, look at that! Like perfect spinal control. Yeah. I think it's better than me. Each rep looks very consistent. Mm -hmm.
So because she's wearing a belt, this is deceiving. Meredith, it looks fine. Okay, cool. Now that we got that out of the way. Um, I would like to see more arch in this movement. I would That's like to see what I was about to say. I would like to see your chest up more. If that belt wasn't there, your back would be rounded. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, can you go like just skip to the middle of the video and yeah, yeah, I see that. There? You said those first two reps are fine and neutral. Love so, if here. you ever notice, if you guys ever notice, for example, I don't know if Trevor does it, but I do. When more. I first start doing a stiff legged deadlift, I start in arch because yep. I know I'm gonna end in neutral. Yeah. But if you start in neutral, you're gonna end like, rounded. You're you might end rounded exactly. So exactly. Th this is a thing that it. I don't actually know where it, well, I sort of know where it came from. It came from the like early 2010s when the like mobility and like everyone, nobody can move well and you have to spend an hour preparing yourself to do any kind of movement or you're going to break in half craze started. Uh, and one of the big things in that craze is like always tuck chin, always tuck chin, always tuck chin. That if you extend your neck, it, you're gonna break in half. It's gonna you're gonna right. die. Um, and then like now it's kind of been repurposed now in the whole biomechanics thing. Um, and the the reason they say it is like, oh, if you extend your cervical spine, it shuts off the nervous system's effect. Like they can't, your glutes can't fire anymore. Which a, it doesn't work like that. B your your head leads where your body your body follow, follows your head so if you're looking down it is cueing all of your spinal extensors to go into almost flexion if you look up and forward you are cueing your spinal extensors to extend and arch the spine so i think literally she could she could take care of this entire issue if she just didn't look down just look forward just and look forward arch through the whole back and go from there i respect i i want to agree with trevor i don't know if that will completely fix the issue but i think it's a start and i think it's worth trying because what you see is as people like get really tired they get up here oh, and baby. they breathe everyone he's gotten up again all right and she does it. She gets up here and she breathes as she's keeping this tucked. Yeah. And she's letting her chest round forward as she's breathing. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be like big breath in, big chest, so, so lordosis in the low back. Here. Here. Right. Right, right. Luca. So she's keeping that chest up when she's so focused on, I have to keep this chin tucked. It's right. almost forcing rounding of the upper back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to kind of reset in that top position. So come up, big chest, breath in, uh, you know, tummy out or you know, so. Like back. if you go go forward, maybe like a rep or two where she's at the top and breathing, you'll see it happen. All right, let me get this out of the way. Like you can see, she starts to round her back as she's breathing. She's letting her shoulders come forward. And then going into it with her shoulders forward. Yeah, it's essentially like you pinch your shoulder blades back and you pretty much. And then as she gets more fatigued, that neck right, right. goes further and further down. Yeah. Yep. So I think she could fix a lot of it literally with just the cueing of stop looking at the ground. Well, Meredith, try it and let us know. Tag us. I will say that was a that was really good technique, though. Oh yeah, I agree. I agree. Sure. sure. <laughs> How many more we got? Oh no, nope. I think this might be the last one. Okay. Is this her again? Yep. Yeah, it's Meredith again. Okay. Is this a row or is she doing a, a stiff leg deadlift on the? My uh, guess would be squat. a stiff leg. Looks like it's the same I, session. I love stiff leg deadlifts in the bell squat. I've yet to try it. So nice. I mean, not even watching this video, I would. I, I don't know if I like this grip for stiff legged deadlifts. I don't. I don't either. <laughs> I'd rather have like a straight bar or like a lat pull down bar, right? Th this grip is a whoa. Oh no. So okay, weird. never mind. It's a squat. Okay. 
I don't like this movement. It's for sure. I don't. I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm asking, what is this movement for? I don't like. Right, it. right. Because I imagine that it could, like, it's like a hybrid of like a, um, a deadlift, which he's also kind of uh, getting some. Um, yeah. Uh, extension. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm I don't. I don't like this movement. I don't like this movement for you. So I mean, I think so, it would be if she just had I, the like if this was like a sumo variation, it would just be like use the belt instead, right? Use the belt instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make an assumption that this is for glutes. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, I've God. seen this exact exercise done by like every bikini girl on the planet. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to assume this is like, okay, you're doing this for glutes. So to do this for glutes, um, ditch the handle, just use the, the squat belt squat attachment. And it's, Put it on. God, this is not my computer screen that's sharing, so it doesn't work. <laughs> put it on where? Um, so put the chain on the further, the furthest, the closest under you. Put yeah, the yeah. carabiner on that point. Right here. So that it's the longest lever. Yeah. Yes. So as yes. far as far out as you can. And then you're going to be more vertical as you squat. Mm -hmm. Then you will probably need to get some plates or something to stand on because ten belt squats a lot of times don't have the greatest range of motion, especially if you're short. Yeah. Um. You just take a sumo stance. You stand up tall. If you struggle with balance, then you use you can use a like a ten pound weight for a goblet squat position to counterbalance yourself, and you just do a sumo squat. Using the handle and all that, I don't think is doing anything for you, and likely just making this movement more awkward. And more, more fatiguing, yeah. Yeah, it's causing some um, axial fatigue, right? Yeah, and, and also the thing is, so this when is the like, benefit. This oh, is gonna really going to be me getting nerdy for a minute, but let the video play. Yeah. So notice the force vector as she goes through this, that the way to if she's trying to train her glutes the thing that is actually working the hardest is her trying to extend her knees because the force vector is here her hips don't have to do any work to extend here what's right, right. actually having to work is her knees uh, her flexing and to straighten her legs Doing pushing her hips through into an extension isn't going to actually do anything to move the weight. Right. So if she's doing this for her glutes, this might sound kind of mean, and I don't mean it to sound kind of mean. If you're doing this for your glutes, you're getting very, very little out of it for your glutes. That's me saying yes. as nice as possible. Yeah, and so if you were going to use this grip, I think still putting it like if you're if you're gonna do this with a handle, it would most likely be better served doing, um, like a stiff leg deadlift variation. Yeah. Still probably loading, uh, putting the chain on this this peg here and using a straight bar or something like that. For right. glutes, sumo stance, like Trevor said, get some bumper plates and put them under your feet. Get the the normal belt attachment, and uh, stay as upright as you can. Yeah, and don't hold on to the handles. Yeah, yeah, because that'll make you lean forward, especially on this machine. It looks like it's you'll, the you'll lean forward much further and away. Ninety percent of people will pull. Yeah. So, Trevor has um that dumbbell the video with him doing the um the squats with the dumbbell, just a light dumbbell in his hand to counterbalance. Um, that would be worth trying as well. I agree. I agree with everything. Cool. I don't have anything more to add. Well, these uh, these uh, te technique analysis are fun. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got a ton of people like these. Um, that, yeah, is that I, all? I, I think that was this all was it, right? All right, cool. Go to Trevor's Instagram. Let's critique his. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go to Shimmy's Instagram after if we could. No, because I don't have as much content as you do. My shit is like one thing here and there. It's not the same.
It's not like every every uh, training session. Yeah, it's not the same as one rep, three. Like it's not. Well, it's it would be more than one rep if it took you more. Like if you got through a rep in sooner than a month. Yeah, I know. Like you start your centric last week and you just now finish it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, our, la- our last post uh, was uh, surprisingly co- more controversial than I thought it was going to be. That that was an interesting thing to watch. I was very I surprised. People- I, I thought I, I I wrote you both individually. I said our last pod I thought was so good. I was, oh, I liked it a lot. Did did I end up messaging you, Shimmy, that I watched it? No, you said I you were going. I did, I did, and you were. I I was easily the best one. I thought it was so good. I remember yeah. doing it and being like, "This is one of those." All right, let's go, let's go, go up, go up, let's roll. His most recent ones. Let's go. Let's see what we got, Trevor. All right. I don't even know what we're seeing first. Okay, away curls. All right. With the back support. I saw that. You last like night. these? I love these. You love these. My my biceps are sore right now. So that's a big deal because guys, Trevor has a hard time growing his arms. So if his biceps yeah. are getting sore, that's, that's a big deal. I, yeah, I, uh, if so you can't is... tell, I have a hard time growing my Trevor, arms. You, uh, you don't like bringing these more forward? Mm-hmm. I'm asking. No, I don't. More okay. forward like his body position not... or his arm? For, no, meaning wrist closer to the no. shoulder. No, for, for the cables, I feel like it's just like from here to here is the best. And when I do this, it just kind of doesn't feel like I'm doing anything. Got it. But with a free weight, that's not the case. Correct. Got it. It's just with the the cables and behind the arm like that. Oh, I'm so here to critique this one. I went to you post. I was like, I'm so here for this dude. One arm. Seriously. The gym was busy. I was actually really pissed. I wait. I literally waited uh, 15 minutes to be able to do both of these. I was about to steal your phone. You normally do these on the free motion machine, don't you? I do. And literally, like, as soon as I walked up and did one set of the curls, somebody was like, hey, I was about to get on this uh, when the other guy left. How many sets do you have? And so I was, like, trying to be nice. And so I was like, okay, I'll just do my curls, and then I'll let him hop on it. Um, And I figured he would do, you know, three or four sets. After six sets, he was moving to his third exercise on it, and I got tired of waiting. Did you ever listen to me or take or, or try that the cuff lateral where instead of putting it on your wrist, you hold the cuff? Uh, I can't. Oh, we I, don't, about- I don't know why. For some reason, when I do that, it hurts my shoulder. You know what I'm Especially talking about? Especially my, yeah. Real about it. Especially my left shoulder, which is my one that's like super, super messed up. Dylan, do you know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah, I think you like you put your hands in. Is that what we were talking about? Yeah, you, like, well, put the cuff in. here. Yes, right. yes. Yeah, so you can actually grab it like a handle. Yes, I don't know yes. what it is, but that immediate that always hurts my left shoulder. Dylan, have you ever tried this? Um, I've tried it for rear delt flies, I think. Right. So try it standing, like for a cross body lateral raise, dude. I'm never going back. It's my favorite lateral raise exercise variation yeah. that there is. I'm going to try. I just tried to try in the ones Trevor does, the behind the back. But the problem is, like, my arms don't really get a much added stretch. I didn't realize just because everything kind of gets in the yeah. way back there. I was like, oh, cool. I'll get this big stretch. And then it just, like, just stops at my the sides of me. And I'm like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, right, do another one. Are we not critiquing his posing? Um, bring your elbows I forward. About those. Bring I don't your know elbows how to forward critique. like this. I'm not qualified. So your hands are here. Bring bring your elbows forward like this. Yeah, this is, this is why I told Tan he needs to tell me the tips he got. Well, so uh, his I, the posing coach I sent Tan to is is my posing coach. Okay, that's what he well, that's he, what he would they, tell me. There's the, there's a seminar here uh, that's uh, happened at one of the gyms in here. Oh, cool. And he I mean, went to it, dude. This is this is just magic. A lot of Great. weight too. Great. I don't even use that much weight. The hell. <laughs> been doing it for longer than you dylan That's yeah i have yes, very yeah. true it's very true um yeah so this is something i've been fucking up so i have the one with three pegs right so i have one here here and here 
and I've been loading yeah. this one. This Trevor's like so, load, the, load the top peg, but his top yes. peg is this one. Let so let me uh, let me uh, clarify this. Uh, if you load the peg that is at the shoulders, there is zero change in loading from top to bottom. Oh, interesting. Awesome. It is That's a because awesome. it is not pendulumming at all. I fucking love this. I machine, gotta try this. Way. Man. I've if never tried it. this one. If you load the it. far back top one, then as you go down, it gets heavier through the through the motion. And if yeah. you load the bottom forward one, it is heavier as it is closer to the top portion of it. Yeah. I so I, I, I put a little bit on the bottom so it feels like okay. Otherwise it feels kind of right. weird. It feels like nothing. It feels especially. like yeah, I tried it with just the one. I was like, this feels like nothing at all at the top. But it's weird. putting a little bit on the bottom there and then the rest up there, it's like you get down to the bottom and it literally feels like it's gonna put you through the floor. Yeah. And it's like so much effort for your hamstrings to just maintain and not let go. I really like it. Yeah. I'm telling you, Shimmy, you'll love it. Cause I literally, so if Trevor has like a whole workout on it. My Saturday workout is like literally my whole workouts on the machine. I'll do a GM yeah. and then squats and then lunges. And I'm not like, a lot of gyms. Not a lot of gyms have this though. Like I'm planning on no, it's, it's getting more popular. It's getting a lot more popular. I don't know what it is recently, but I've been seeing it pop up more. Yeah. I mean, my gym. I'm got on doing Smith Machine good mornings because I haven't done them in almost a year. And what I'm actually planning on doing is I'm actually planning on doing them in a in a more of a moderate rep range. Because when I do the lower rep range Smith Machine good mornings, my hamstring starts to hurt. My left hamstring. Um, I mm. tore it like years ago. So like right oh, yeah. under my glute, it's not so – so I'm going to probably do it in like the 10 to 15 rep range instead of the classic like 5 to 10 that everybody says, hoping it goes well. I just get so pumped. You can You can handle that. You think? And, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not big. Like I can handle it. <laughs> I think good morning. What What is your moderate rep range on good mornings? Uh, six to ten. What is your what? Well, that's your moderate rep range compared to what? No, no, no. Excuse me. Ten to fifteen instead okay. of using six to ten. <laughs> okay, I I actually kind of like good mornings up to like twelve reps. Yeah. Like I mean, like I, I, I say that that's what I'm planning for. Maybe I'll end up doing 12 or 13. And I'm like week one, first set. I'm like, no, that was good. I'm not going to do anymore. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I should go back to, um, because then I would use a little bit less load. So maybe the benefit of a little bit less load would also potentially pump my low back a little bit less. Trevor, do you not so do this like normal, on a normal upright seat because you're going to hit the back? Uh, Because it was taken. I didn't want to wait. And I think we've talked about this before. You like doing the extensions, pushing that elbow forward instead of just keeping the arm back. back. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that too. It, I was curious with your elbows you, out, right? So your elbows more you, out here. You get a better stretch um, yeah. by doing this because you can close the elbow angle more. Yeah. Whereas here, you actually can't close the elbow angle as much. Yeah. So that's a little bit about in, here. That's what I talked about in my school crusher video. God, my triceps are actually so sore. I like you, it. But you don't like really you don't like tucking like your. I you don't like tucking your elbows tuck. as much. I oh. physically can't. Like literally, like this is as much as I can. Yeah, I like, I the like way from here is actually I have to turn my hands down to tuck my elbows, and this doesn't do any good. Yeah, I know this has become popular. I don't I don't know. I prefer it with my elbow like completely upright as opposed to pushing it forward. I've tried both. I like it hurts it. my elbow. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Mine. So I get the I get I, when I posted that, especially on um, I don't know if this is a good source, but a lot of TikTok people were like, "Oh, it hurts my elbow when I do this." So I think it really just depends on what doesn't cause pain, you know? Yes, yeah, it's for a lot of people because some people ultimately they get, try they get both, pain back here. Feels best. Some people get pain back here, and some people get pain down here. So yeah, ultimately try both, see what feels best. Trevor, I think best. also on this chest press machine, do you think you could drop the seat more so the handles are more in line with your chest? Hurts my shoulders. Oh, it does. You tried it. So remember, I have torn my left shoulder. Yeah, torn my I always forget cut, that. I forget that you dislocated have... my left shoulder yeah, nine know, times and my right shoulder six times. Yeah. So I got real fucked up shoulders. Right, right. Yeah, I forget that. You could look at the. Uh, so there's a lot, my... lot of things I would I I would rather do for my like chest and shoulder training, but I physically just can't. Yeah. If you get if you want, I I probably have some more technique stuff to work on. We can go through my library. Sure. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, let me make sure there's nothing inappropriate. Look at some of your videos. Can can I, I, Shimmy, do you have a video of you doing rows? Barbell rows? Somewhere. A, any kind of rows because dumbbell rows, bent rows. Yeah. Because I, I have a critique that I've given you before privately 
okay. that I would love to give publicly. <laughs> Here's the critique. You're fucking bad at them. You take too long. <laughs> yeah, Dylan, if you yes. go, Dylan, if you go to my Instagram, I definitely have it. I haven't barbell rode uh, in, in months, but like it's definitely there. I have a you few. do it with dumbbell rows and it's literally. You can watch the, the RP video too. That's literally the RP video is literally what my critique is. Mm. The whole, the, like the name of the RP video. What is the name of the RP it's, video? It's actually not a critique, but it's a thing that Shimmy does when he's comparing us that I, um, it's a slight irritation of mine. Little pet peeve. Um, I like the, uh, you know, I like the uh, candid. Uh, oh, that's honesty. a good face, Shimmy. Which one? Uh, down. That? Uh, right there. Yeah, yeah. That's a good yeah. face. Yeah, I did on purpose. Keep going. Cable, You're gonna have to keep going rope. for a while. Yeah, he hasn't done rows in a hot minute. Yeah. Uh, also, Shimmy. Um. So we, a few people have talked about this. What is with your like heels touching? My heels on don't. A squat? Touch. They basically touch on the squat. They're close. I, I I don't know. I just like them because it's weird. I'm really like I'm really into forcing my knees as far out as I can. So I push my toes out a lot. So like there, yeah, you see it, Dylan, in the middle there. Well, I was like, yeah. So, so you like I don't this. know. It's just like comfy for me when when I'm doing squatting with a free weight. My stance is a little bit wider, but Smith Machine, it's like that, like it's a fucking weird. duck in water. I, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna ask how you like these flies. Don't like them. Don't do them. I don't I, like okay. them. I, don't I was going to say. I was going to say. So in the voiceover, I was like, I just tried these guys. I don't know if I'm going to like them. I don't like them. Don't do I've them. Seen people, I've seen people cuff at their elbow, and I'm like, I feel like I would not feel that at all. Oh. So there I, you go. The benefit of cuffing at the elbow is yeah. uh, if you have like a lot of joint pain, but that's about it. Yeah. So yeah. This is, I think, like one rep. Oh, no, it's not. It's a few. All right. Okay. So um, oh, it's not awful. Critique... Hurts my eyes to watch. If I were to critique Shimmy, there's a few things I would critique him on. One is the weird drop of his hips he does on his reps. So my hips are actually not dropping. I'm just rounding my upper back and it looks like they are. My hips are not moving. It looks like you're driving your hips forward. And this is a right, small But critique. I'm not. But I'm not. I'm just rounding critique. my upper back. And I think what actually, yeah, I think what actually happens is like, it's just a slight shift in center of gravity as you round and like open the upper back. Correct. Um, I'm curious if you're going to do it here, which is my big thing to uh, critique. You are going to do it here. You didn't, the video cut out though. Myo reps. Yeah, I'm so weird. Okay, so my critique is Shimmy will be like, uh, how you know I I did X Y Z weight for X Y Z reps and you did X Y Z weight for X Y Z reps, and it, it's like yes, but you also did like two Meyer rep sets and not straight sets, so it doesn't quite correlate the same. Although his eccentrics take him like a year to get through, so. But might it also be that you wouldn't be able to do Meyer rep sets because your lower back is too pumped? Like could yeah, you? I can't. Eat? Could no, I right. physically can't. Right, yeah. like I think so it's very you, odd that you can. So if you could do my rep sets on these, you would, correct? I honestly I don't know, just because literally, um, like I don't do any my reps or anything for anything back related because it just yeah. doesn't feel good. Yeah, oh, I was gonna say that like actually loading stuff. Rows. Well, I no, don't know, like man. I, rows, I like them. Rows. I like them because to when me, I it stand, doesn't feel good. When I stand up at Lappers? the top, as you've seen. Uh, lappers, yes, for that's the oh, one thing. I was gonna say lappers, one that works really well for me. Yeah, what were you saying? I will say sh Shimmy's last rep in this video. I would say is a little bit. Maybe I would I would question counting it if I was tracking. Correct, correct. It's loose. I don't so, I don't so, know if Shimmy says that here, but correct. So so I've it. talked about this before when I do bent over rows. I usually allow myself one looser rep because that's how I know I'm done. Exactly. And that's a oh, great point. I think allowing that one looser rep and knowing when it's there is actually good because the thing about rows is they just kind of hit a wall. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I, there's a little bit of movement that naturally like torso movement that naturally comes with a row. 
And if you don't allow that little bit of natural movement, I, I literally don't think that you're ever going to like get anything out of rows. But that movement isn't body English or using momentum. It's just like shifting of center of gravity as you move through the, like as the weight moves and pulls you forward and things like that. But this last rep, you see like that rep, you can tell it's getting tough. Or that was and then I stopped because tough. I know, I know it's it going to go bad. It kind of came yeah. up. He knew that if he did another rep, it's like, oh, that, that last rep was kind of ugly. But I, I also know that if I come up and I relax for five seconds, I'll get one or two more. I know that. Uh, my Maya. point on the Maya reps, though, was that it's like, it, if you, it's hard, you can't necessarily quantify, like, this is just a you, a you thing that you do this, where you're like, how many reps did you do with XYZ weight? And I'm like, well, I did 12. And you're like, I did 13. I'm like, you did 13 with two Maya rep sets. So I get you. And, and I get you why you're saying it's not apples to apples. But like we said, at the same time, if you could do my reps, you would. You just can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah, it's I a very funny little thing. Yeah. I tried them on um I've been trying them on flexion rows and I I, I don't think I can keep doing them, unfortunately. Oh, oh these, my reps really? and flexion seen... rows. Cable cable, yeah, cable no, flexion I... rows. Cable flexion rows. So Still, I thought as a cable. Yeah, oh, I know. God, I, no. I, Jesus. I, I, it's brutal. I have it's to a brutal, lay on like, the ground. 20 sets 20 reps i'm just like well it's just like oh it's just a lot for a flexion row like with the extended range of motion and stuff and like wait for like two or three yeah. minutes before i can even get up because my back is so pumped yeah yeah it, it's have, just, I, it, have we seen these before is this what you yeah, sent I sent, us so this is the last one i sent you so i just wanted to show like also the progression from like the first video i sent you to this one okay. although this is a okay. more flexion style row and then i also want some feedback on it on what we can improve okay. It's taken me a lot yeah, to learn this. It's taken me a lot to learn this movement. Like it's it's been dude, you're completely right. It takes time. This is not intuitive. You don't it's learn not. this. One no, no. No. It's no. a lot of like watching the video back and then trying to like, okay, I need to fix this thing. Dylan, you know, I actually uh, this is I don't know, take this what you will. I think I told you this. I think you can round your upper back even more. So, like I said, I would have your dumbbells out rather than so close to you more Over. in front of you yeah. which will Over pull here? you forward yes. correct okay so okay okay correct and then it will help with the arch instead of having okay. them so close yeah so i think right, are... good right in this position here between this dude standing here and the plate here of the american flag this peak of your back this is where the movement comes from yeah not i think i was back. and i was concerned so that's why i was like not moving as much because I was like, okay, I want to. The goal right now is just to be able to keep my spine neutral. Because you guys saw that one I sent uh, for people listening. I sent one in between these where my back was not as rounded as the first one, but was still a little bit rounded. And so this is the first one where it's pretty much neutral. And so I was really just trying to focus on like not trying to drive through my legs as much and trying to keep my back neutral and not moving too much because I felt like if I moved too much, then I would somehow in the chain of my back like somewhere round over. So. Now I think you know I like that cue of like putting the dumbbells out a little bit more. I'll keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But um, so a cue I use is I actually cue really big belly and bracing my stomach against my legs, mm -hmm. and try to, to keep, keep it locked my, in that position to keep my low back tight, and okay. then make the movement come from my thoracic spine. Yeah, I feel like the barbell is more intuitive than the dumbbell. Like the dumbbell, it is taking me a minute for sure. It is. But these felt much better. Pump through the whole back. This looks better. Thank it's you. an improvement. Especially from the first one. So but yeah, yeah just yeah. I would I would agree with Shimmy. Let those dumbbells come out in front of you. And get that like round through the upper back, that thoracic spine. Let that be what's rounding. All right. Sounds good. All right, I got to probably get back to some client stuff. Yeah, I got another call in about 30 minutes, so. Okay, well, uh, wow. thanks again, guys. This is guys good. Burning the midnight oil with your clients. Burning the midnight. It's because oh. it's 1030 at night. Here. Uh, I was going to say, well, I mean, it's middle yeah, of the afternoon here, so. I know, it's yeah. three. <laughs> yeah. Freaking weirdo out in London. 
It's crazy. You guys, guys remember off, that is you guys want to turn off the recording real quick or no? Hold on. I just want everyone to know the reason it took so long was because Shimmy is, Shimmy left us and went to London. And then he's like, hey, I'm in London, by the way. So uh I can't record it at a normal time. What are we gonna do? Yeah. I'm like, Figure What's it that? out. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like so I'm in a different fucking him. place every time we pod. I'm in it's London. I'm in Charleston. I'm in who knows Savannah. Sometime, who knows? Yeah, you were in like Georgia one time. You're having trouble with your car or something. Like yeah, that was oh, funny. I'm just in this, yeah, that was a random flat hotel. tire on the interstate. See, I can't because I have all this equipment, so I just stay here because I would just fuck it up if I brought it somewhere else. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. And uh, we will probably do another one of these, like Shimmy had mentioned, where we do um, more, uh, like we have you kind of give some feedback on like maybe what you're struggling with, with the technique and, and where you feel it, where you don't, yada, yada, yada. Um, so that would probably be a cool progression. So I'll probably do that in a few episodes or so. So thank you all for listening. Hey, I just wanted to thank you for making it this far in the podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're interested in coaching, feel free to click the links below in order to book a coaching consultation. Thank you all for watching.